Hello and welcome to Crime Bites, the show where we talk about some truly bizarre and disturbing crime cases. My name is Liz and today is True Crime Tuesday. So we are looking at crimes involving mothers this May, and what more new and exciting time for a woman than when she is pregnant? There are usually many new and exciting things going on, even if it isn't necessarily your first child. The excitement of new life and the joy that comes with it can be just wonderful. So can pizza bites and double brownie batter cookie dough explosion ice cream every morning for breakfast. No guilt. Of course, the stress and difficulties that can come along with it can also just be simply overwhelming as well. So for today's story, we are going to look at two young mothers-to-be from Texas and a horrific event that would occur that would change both of their lives forever. So let's start by meeting Taylor. Taylor is currently pregnant with her third child, who she is having with her fiance, Wade. She has two other children from different fathers who were currently living with her mother in another state. Taylor and Wade's relationship started fast and heavy, and his mother recalls Taylor being more into Wade than he was into her. Taylor told Wade about her pregnancy just around a month after they started seeing each other, and the couple decided to have a go of it and raise the baby together. From the beginning, Taylor was super invested in her pregnancy, really just hoping that the joy of a new life would solidify what she had with Wade. Taylor would describe herself on Facebook as a wildflower, wild, free, and wicked with a glow that was never meant to be tamed. Her page also listed medical assistant, office administration, and phlebotomy as her professions, but currently she and Wade were working together on Wade's hog farm. Now let's meet Reagan. Reagan is currently pregnant with her second child who she is having with her husband, Homer. She had married Homer a year prior and she also did have another daughter named Kenley from a previous relationship. Kenley was three years old. She and Homer were both very hard workers. Homer had just started a new job at a landscaping business and Reagan worked at a seafood restaurant. She was still working even though she was very pregnant. Although she had her daughter when she was younger, she didn't like being called a young mom and was completely devoted to her daughter and just providing the best life that she could for them. Taylor and Reagan did know each other casually they initially became friends on Facebook in one of those Facebook groups. And then Taylor was Reagan's photographer for both her engagement and wedding photos when she was married to Homer. They seemed to bond in recent weeks over the fact that they were both due close to the same date and they were both having little girls. On October 8th, of 2020, Taylor would visit Reagan in the evening, bringing her a little gift, and the two would visit for a little bit, presumably talking about the babies they were both expecting. And Taylor actually was scheduled to have a cesarean delivery the next day for her daughter, and she was kind of nervous about it. So then on October 9th, 2020, 911 would receive two calls one related to each mother to be. The first call received is a frantic call from Taylor saying that she was giving birth and that there was an officer attempting to pull her over. So she was driving and she was trying to get herself to a hospital as fast as she could. So they continue to pull her over. She finally pulls over. When they do, they encounter Taylor holding her newborn daughter, Clancy, with the umbilical cord still coming out of her pants. She was in a frantic state and attempting to give CPR to the newborn and just begging them to help her. Medical assistance would soon follow, and when they were able to get Taylor and Clancy to the hospital, 
Unfortunately, little Clancy was pronounced dead on the scene. Taylor seemed to be in a state of shock and would refuse medical treatment. So the next 911 call would pertain to Reagan. It would come in around an hour later from Taylor's 911 call and it would be from Reagan's mother. So that morning, Reagan's mother would go to her house to check on her at Homer's request. Homer was unable to get a hold of her all morning after some texts that didn't really sound like her. So for them, that was really unusual. So after her mother gets there and lets herself inside the house, she would immediately call 911. Responding officers would report finding Reagan lying face down on the floor in a pool of her own blood. They would flip her over to investigate and they found that she had multiple stab wounds along with a large incision across her abdomen. Her 34 week old daughter Braxlin Sage Hancock was nowhere to be found. So we started our story with two pregnant women and now we have a woman with a dead baby and another dead woman who is missing her baby. Obviously, the first thing that authorities want to know is where is Braxlyn Sage? She was clearly ripped savagely from her mother's womb and was nowhere to be seen at the time. Reagan's other daughter, Kenley, would be found upstairs hiding in her closet, but they would also find a soaked pull-up in a pool of Reagan's blood at the crime scene, which indicated that she had seen the horrific ending that her mother faced. That poor child. So the hospitals in the area were notified, and guess whose case is starting to look just a little suspicious? So Taylor did not want medical personnel checking her out at the hospital and she was acting extremely strange. When she was examined, apparently the placenta fell out of her yoga pants, but then upon further investigation, it was clear that Taylor had not given birth. In fact, she didn't even have a cervix. What the heck is going on? So now it was clear that Clancy, Taylor's daughter, was not Clancy, Taylor's daughter, but most likely Braxlyn Sage, Reagan's missing baby. When confronted, Taylor would tell them a very unlikely tale about an altercation that the two mothers had that ended with Reagan injured, hitting her head, I believe, and then Taylor cutting the baby out of her to save its life. You know, instead of calling 911 like most of us would probably do if something like that had happened. Anyways, Taylor was released from the hospital and put into jail while the pure horror of what actually occurred would be revealed upon further investigation. Unfortunately for Taylor, Reagan's autopsy would show a different story than the one she told at the hospital. It seemed that poor sweet Reagan was smashed in the head with a monogram jar of pink and blue sand from her wedding. The irony considering Taylor was her freaking photographer. Then Taylor switched to a claw hammer hitting her in the head with both sides. Reagan would suffer from multiple skull fractures, but while she was suffering on her couch with her head bashed in, Taylor started to cut her stomach open and remove her baby. Now Reagan, poor girl, she tries to fight back still. She fights so hard that she sustains a dislocated finger and has part of another finger sliced almost completely off trying to stop Taylor from removing her child from her stomach. But in her compromised state, Taylor was able to overpower her. She also sustained around 100 stab wounds from the same scalpel, which was ultimately found lodged in her neck. So yeah, your story is not adding up, Taylor. And apparently that was a theme with her. 
It is worth noting that since high school, she was known to fake pregnancies. She was also generally known as a pathological liar to those closest to her. She had her whole family blocked while she was um, promoting her fake pregnancy on Facebook because they knew that she had a hysterectomy after her second child. She wove quite a twisted web that she ultimately could not maintain. She called in a bomb threat the first day that she was supposed to be induced and Wade's mother had her suspicions about Taylor as well. And when she heard about the bomb threat, she apparently looked straight at her and said, you did it. Apparently poor Wade was one of the only people who believed Taylor. And I guess she was successful at that because she said that doctors don't recommend intimacy for high risk pregnancies and then went around with a fake belly. He accepted that. And honestly, I can see where someone could possibly pull that off. Poor guy. It would have been his first child and he was just in no way prepared for the, forgive my language, but no other way to say it, of the mind fuck that was Taylor Parker. On top of that, the second day that she was going to be induced, which ultimately was the day that she went and murdered Reagan, she set up a bogus deal with a hog rancher that had Wade driving a trailer full of hogs hours away to a farm that had told Taylor no but she ended up purchasing a burner phone to make it look like the deal was a go. So poor Wade was going to make this great deal for his company, then go meet his baby girl. And instead he shows up and meets an angry farmer who is not expecting him. Luckily they were able to work out something, but poor Wade's day was about to get way worse because instead of meeting his new bundle of joy, Clancy, who he was so excited for, he had to go home and hear that not only did she not exist, but that his fiance had committed this barbaric crime in an effort to perpetuate this lie that she was feeding him. Taylor would be charged and found guilty of capital murder in the death of Reagan Hancock. Her attorneys would argue that the baby was never alive and would move to dismiss the kidnapping part that was included in the charge, which would have lowered the charge from capital murder to just murder. Luckily, this didn't happen, and Taylor was charged and became the seventh woman in Texas to be placed on death row, where she remains today. Now, I don't know how you all feel about the death penalty. I myself am not in favor of it for various reasons, but I will say if we're going to have a death penalty, People like Taylor are the ones who should get it. And that is all on that. In a statement to the court, Reagan's mother, Jessica, called Taylor an evil piece of flesh demon. She said, my baby was alive, still fighting for her babies when you tore her open and ripped her baby from her stomach. So, so, so sad. So, that is going to do it for today's story. But as always, let's end our day on a more positive note. So for this story, we have a woman in Houston who was also on her way to a birthing center to welcome her third child into the world. Unfortunately for her, time was not on her side, which resulted in an actual birth in the car. They were able to film it and it's a birthing video, so it's not for the squeamish, but what an experience. <laughs> she gave birth to a healthy 10 pound baby in the passenger seat of their car. Her husband was right there with her and everyone was checked out afterwards and happy and healthy. So although bizarre, these stories can happen and Maybe Taylor even got some inspiration from this one. Yikes. Anyhow, guys, I am just done here. I, all the evil. 
Please let me know what you think about Taylor and Reagan in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe. Stay safe out there and be careful who you trust. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.